Thank you for considering me for a teaching position at your school. I appreciate the chance to demonstrate how my teaching practices would match your school students' centric philosophy. Who are two of the key cognitive development theorists and what are the main contributions to the field of cognitive development? I'd like to focus on Jean Piaget and Lev Vygotsky. Central to Piaget's theory were the following components, schemata, adaptation processes, and the four stages of development. Piaget's schemata represent characteristics of the world, categories with preconceived ideas in them that can be classified into classes or sets. Piaget's adaptation process consisted of active engagement with the physical and social world via two interdependent means, assimilation and accommodation. He believed children adapt in four distinct, largely invariant stages, from an originally egocentric viewpoint of the world to an increasingly decentered one. He called these four stages of human development the cognitive development theory. While Piaget believed children adapt to the world via external objects, Vygotsky emphasized nurture over nature. For him, language and a positive social environment are key to a child's development. The two main components of Vygotsky's theory are the more knowledgeable other and the zone of proximal development. The MKO is someone with more experience than the learner in a particular concept, task or process. By interacting with an MKO, a learner acquires knowledge through a five-step process of social cultural development. This process is often known as the zone of proximal or potential development. Or ZPD. Who are two of the key moral development theorists and what are their main contributions to the field of moral development? Okay, now I'd like to focus on Lawrence Kohlberg and Albert Bandura. Kohlberg's work is based on Piaget's theory of moral development, which he expanded into six stages within three different levels. Kohlberg's concerned with descriptive ethics notions of right and wrong, rather than normative ethics. Like Piaget, he argues a child's morality develops in an invariant, linear and hierarchical manner. Children move to the next stage through maturation or age, social interaction and exposure to moral dilemmas. Where Kohlberg's theory is concerned mostly with moral reasoning, Bandura was concerned with moral behaviour. His theory consists behaviour to be learned from the learner's environment via observation of other peer or adult individuals. These so-called models offer examples of behaviour to observe, which a learner will encode and imitate based on the following three factors. Perceived similarity to the model, such as the same gender, any social responses to the behaviour that meet the learner's needs, such as peer approval, and the observed positive consequences the behaviour has for others, which is known as vicarious reinforcement. Why do you think it's important for teachers to have an understanding of cognitive and moral development? While some argue good teaching requires more than just the theoretical knowledge of child psychology, there's a widespread conviction that understanding child development contributes to more effective teaching practices and the better socialization of students. Understanding child development gives teachers a measure to better differentiate gifted students or those underachieving based not merely on performance but potential, not merely on achievement but ability. Understanding child development helps teachers to better tailor their practices to the needs of each individual student, thus maximizing student motivation and engagement which is critical to academic success. This tailoring to student needs is informed by learning theories so that teachers provide sufficient structure to lessons to keep students productive without stifling their initiative, resourcefulness, engagement and motivation. Studying a variety of learning theories also equips the teacher to see the shortcomings or potential misapplications of each theory, which is important to constantly reflect on because no one theory is applicable to all circumstances and each of the four theorists I've mentioned today have been criticised for various reasons. How will knowing about theories of cognitive and moral development help you in your teaching practice? Whether planning lessons that challenge, engage and motivate students to reach their full potential abilities and achieve academic success, or managing a socially diverse class full of differing needs, I will constantly reflect on the strengths and limitations of various learning theories to best focus on when, how, or why a particular theory will be beneficial to the students or to a lesson's outcomes. With Piaget's theory, I can align my pedagogies correctly with my students' cognitive level when modelling, grading language, and assigning tasks. By giving students concrete materials to play with physically when teaching them abstract concepts like mathematics, I'll be facilitating their conservation skills, minimising frustration. Vygotsky's theory supports what's learned must be taught, which for me entails guided practice. By modelling step-by-step -step what I expect my students to do, they'll be better positioned to achieve their assigned tasks. Kohlberg's theory can provide the reasoning behind moral discussion, rules, standards, and consequences whenever they play a role in my class, or even outside the class. Once the moral framework and code of conduct have been established in my class, Bandura's theory can encourage what has been determined to be the correct behaviour within that framework through modelling and vicarious reinforcement. Can you please provide an example of the application of cognitive development in the classroom? Please imagine me teaching a grade 3 class equivalent fractions by using a fraction wall. This lesson would assume the students are in Piaget's concrete operational stage. I would begin the lesson reviewing what fractions are because they would have studied them in grade 2. This is schema activation, a cognitive strategy retrieving relevant prior knowledge so that new knowledge can connect to it. Then I'd introduce the concept of equivalent fractions, which clearly has parallels with Piaget's concept of conservation. By modelling different examples of equivalent fractions, I'd give each student a set of fraction walls so they can explore the abstract concept physically. 
While I'd guide their practice step by step at first, once I'm satisfied they've moved through their ZDP, I'd give them a worksheet for individual practice. I'd move about the class, monitoring students and helping wherever necessary. I'd follow up a class recap of what we learnt with an I Can Now checklist. Can you please provide an example of an application of moral development in the classroom? Please imagine me teaching a grade 1 class and I want to gauge the moral development of each student. Grade 1s would mostly be in Kohlberg's pre-conventional level. Some would be in stage 1, others in stage 2. I'm trying to facilitate their development into stage 3. So I've decided to open a moral discussion via a guided reading of Dr. Zeus's The Cat in the Hat, followed by a class debate. Now, almost everything the cat does would be prohibited in real life. He invades the house, causing exponential mayhem until the children's mother's imminent arrival. At this point, the cat cleans up the mess, leaving no trace, but there's a moral mess in its place. When the children's mother asks them, did you have any fun? What did you do? They don't tell her about the cat. The book closes by asking the reader what they would tell their mother. I would elicit from the students what they would do, then ask them to write half a page about it, collecting it for formative assessment, and also would talk about it afterwards by sharing a few of them. Okay, thank you. Thank you.